Having discussed some of the basic operations, let's talk about how you can unravel what's going on when you have more than two variables and more than one operation occurring in a single expression. So here we have three variables, P, Q, and R, and we have a couple of different operations. And it just asks us to determine when is this true and when is it false. So to do this, we're going to do exactly the procedure we discussed earlier, which is we are going to create a column for each of the variables, P, Q, and R. And let's draw some separators here for ourselves. And let's think about all the combinations. Well, if I fix two of the variables, P and Q, I'm gonna assume those are true. There's two options for R. R is either true or R is false. And now I'm gonna keep P the same. And if I were to change Q from true to false, there are again two options where P is true and Q is false. Again, R can be either of the other ones. So R is either true or R is false. And then we have only really haven't messed with the P yet. Those same combinations of Q and R where one is true and the other is true and one is true and the other is false, also hold if P is false. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but with the first column being all falses. So copy down four falses. And then it's either that they're both true. The first one is true and the second is false. The first one is false and the second one is true then false and false. Some people like to memorize the sort of fun little pattern you might notice going on here, which is that the first column has four trues and then four falses. The next one has this repeating pattern of two, 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 two going true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And the last one alternates true, false, 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 true, false. Part of the reason for this is if we try to reason through how many possible combinations there would be in something like this, you might start to realize that each variable has two options. It's either true or it is false. And if you fix one of them, the other variables also have two options. So this grows like something like two to the n-ish. We'll talk more about getting into that exactly right later. But if you have three variables, we have eight combinations here. And if we go back up to the previous things we talked about, you'll notice that when we had two variables, we had four. And when we had one variable, we had two. So it's looking an awful lot like two to the n. We haven't talked about how you would prove something like that, but that is one thing that uh, we are sort of guessing at for now. Having said that little spiel, let's try and figure out what we do here. We haven't talked about how you combine these things. You think about this from the inside out. You start with the innermost thing. And if we look at the set of parentheses here, we'll notice that the innermost operation is Q and R. So I'm gonna create a column for the innermost combination of variables. We have Q and R. And then I'm going to just fill out this column. So I'm looking for where are they both true. And if we do this, we're going to highlight a little bit. In the first column, they're both true. And then no, no, no. And then they're true in this row. And then they are never both true again. So in those two rows, we get that this is true. And then every other place, it is false. So we fill in that information. And then some people don't feel the need to do this. I always find it very easy to mess myself up if I don't. We then are negating that statement. When you move out of the parentheses, we notice we have Q and R, and then we have not of that. So I'm gonna create another column, which you might find slightly tedious, where we take Q and R and we negate it, so not Q and R. So I'm just gonna permute all of the possibilities here. So it's going to be false everywhere it was true and true everywhere that it was false. And then we're going to keep working our way outwards. We now need P or that column we just created. So we are going to create one final column for P or not Q and R. And here, where with and we were looking for where are both things true, or is the exact opposite. We want to look for where both things are false. And then in that instance, it's false. Otherwise, it's always true. So let's look for that. Well, there's only two possibilities, either the first row or the fifth row here. And in the first row, P is true. And in this fifth row, P is false. So this should be true. 
every single place except for this fifth row. Because it's the only place that we have two different instances of false. And then everywhere else, this should be true. So we should have true, 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 true. And now the question is asked to determine when is it true and false? And it's true unless P is false and Q and R are both true. So the only instance in which this is false is this row. The only instance in which this is false is this row here, where we have false, true, true for P, Q, and R respectively. You might say that that kind of almost looks like it's always true. And we'll use this to sort of onboard ourselves to some definitions. We'll write these off to the side, and then we'll maybe mention them again later, which is that something that is always true is called a tautology. Tautology. If something is always false, which would be sort of the opposite of the always true, we call that a contradiction. And if it depends, then we call that a contingency. Again, in typical math circles, these things might get used more or in places where symbolic logic is a more foundational thing. These words are more commonly used. For us, they're sort of a quick shorthand we may use occasionally, but not critically important for what we're trying to do.